Hi class, so this video is on the development of the atom. Basically in this video we're discussing three scientists, Dalton, Thomson, and Rutherford. So if you remember uh, about two weeks ago, there was a day that I was absent and I gave you a graphic organizer in which you had to look up what was the conclusion of, made of these scientists and how did they figure it out. Basically I'm just telling you the answers to that worksheet, uh, to that graphic organizer. So Dalton came first, Thompson came later, and then Rutherford was in the early 1900s. So first was Dalton. Um, Dalton, from looking at other people's work, uh, he came up with five postulates. He said that all matter is composed of indivisible atoms, meaning they can't be divided. All atoms of a given element are identical in mass and all other properties. So a sulfur atom is a sulfur atom, and it's a sulfur atom, no matter what you do. Uh, different elements have different atoms. For example, some atoms have different masses. So sulfur atoms are different than hydrogen atoms, which are different than oxygen atoms. Atoms are indestructible and retain their identities in chemical reactions. Now this is actually not true anymore because you can break apart atoms and um, in, you know, into their parts, uh, protons, neutrons, electrons. and um, they don't keep their same identities when they're in chemical reactions. They, um, they don't have the same chemical and physical properties like zinc inside the coin. When you react it with hydrochloric acid, there's still zinc there, but it's in a different form. It's no longer a solid metal. And the last one is chemical reactions involve the combinations, separation, and rearrangement of atoms. And we're going to learn about that in class. So Dalton, what he did was he looked at other people's experiments he used other people as sources of information in addition to doing his own work. The next guy was Thompson and he did a, a an experiment using a cathode ray tube and I'm not going to explain how that works right now but basically he came up with a model which is shown down here and he called and it was called the plum pudding model Basically, there was a lot from his model. He said that the atom was a large area of diffuse positive charges, diffuse meaning spread out, and there were small patches of minus charges. Now, the reason why this is called the plum pudding model is that in England, and that's where he was from, he was from England, he, they used to eat this thing called plum pudding. It was basically like pudding that you would buy at the store, except it had plum pieces in it. So, um, so that's why uh, it's called the plum pudding. Model. These minus pieces are little pieces of plum that were in the pudding. So, and the last one, the last scientist uh, was Rutherford. And Rutherford did this experiment called the gold foil experiment. And what he did was he shot alpha particles, which are helium atoms. So, alpha particles are helium atoms and he shot them at this piece of gold foil that was very very thin and there was a detection screen around here so you could tell where these alpha particles went and you can see if you look if you zoom in on this image you can see that most of the particles went straight through see how this part is really thick and some of the particles got deflected so what is the reason so I, I have an animation here that's on this part on the screen that shows you that these little red dots are the alpha particles and you can see that most of the particles go straight through and that's because it's not hitting the nucleus but every once in a while you're seeing these red particles hit a nucleus and see they're right there and you can see it bounces off so if most of them go straight through that means the atom is mostly empty space but if it hits the nucleus every once in a while and comes straight back or it goes off to the side it means that this there's some strong central core that is the same charge as these particles so these particles are positively charged these helium atoms the helium nuclei and they bounce off the these nuclei which are so if they bounce off they this one also has to be positive and but it has to be pretty small because only some of them are bouncing off so Rutherford figured out two things he figured out that the nucleus is small 
it's positively charged and the atom is mostly empty space and that's kind of what's shown in this drawing that I'm writing near so this drawing right here the nucleus is small now it's not drawn as small as it usually as it properly is you gotta think about a nucleus as the size of like a dime or a penny in the side of a stadium so if you think of a dime or a penny in, this, in the center of soldier field the, the edge of soldier field would be the whole atom and the nucleus would be the coin in the center so yes that's how small a nucleus is where the protons and the neutrons are so you can see here it's written protons and neutrons are in the nucleus and the electrons are on the outside and the electrons have a negative charge so I hope this video helps you fill out that graphic organizer and helps you understand the development of the atom through time thanks see you tomorrow